Hello, in this video, I'm going to tell you what tendinitis and tendinosis are and what the difference is. Okay, so anything ending in itis refers to inflammation of, and anything ending in osis refers to degeneration of. Um, so tendinitis is inflammation of a tendon. So that would include redness, pain, heat, or swelling. Uh, whereas tendinosis, that's the degeneration of a tendon. So it's an entirely different physiological process that's taking place. Um, so when it comes to degeneration of something like a tendon or fascia, um, what's happening is that there's some sort of overuse taking place. So you're using that tendon in a, the wrong way or more than you should be. Um, and so what's happening is the collagen that makes up the tendon, you're having to break it down and replace it. So normal remodeling. So we're always remodeling our tissues and replacing what's getting broken down with new supplies, new materials to keep it new and fresh. But if you're overusing the tendon and it's breaking down faster than you can produce the correct type of collagen, then instead we replace that correct, strong, dense type of collagen. We replace it with the wrong type that's faster and easier to make. So the wrong type, that collagen is faster and easier to make, but it's also thinner and weaker. And it's not really what we're supposed to use to make tendons. It's the wrong material. But if we can't make the really strong, dense, tough type one type of collagen fast enough to keep up with the demand, then we put in kind of the shoddy materials instead uh, to keep up with that demand. But the problem is that over time, as this continues to happen, that tendon gets transformed from a tendon made of type one, very strong collagen, to a tendon made of other types of weaker collagen. So that's what we mean by degeneration of that tendon. It's degenerating into a weaker tendon that is going to be more vulnerable to injury. Okay, so two entirely different physiological processes. Um, so tendonitis, although we talk about it like it's really common. It's way more rare than tendinosis. Most of the times that we think it's tendinitis, it's more commonly tendinosis. That's because inflammation of anything requires blood supply. Blood is what delivers the inflammatory markers and things that stimulate inflammation in the first place. And then inflammation is caused by increased blood flow to that structure. That's where the redness, pain, heat, and swelling come from, is from the increased blood flow. Um, so tendons in general don't have a great blood supply. They have pretty poor blood supply in general. So it's actually relatively rare that a tendon become inflamed because most tendons don't have enough blood supply to achieve true tendonitis. Um, now, different tendons have a variable amount of blood supply. So certain tendons will be more prone to tendonitis than others because they have more blood su supply available to them. Um, but other tendons have a very kind of weak blood supply, like uh, supraspinatus, for example, or your Achilles. Uh, there's certain tendons in the body that are known to have an even worse blood supply than normal tendons. So in those tendons, it's much more likely to be tendinosis compared to tendonitis. tendinitis. Um, now, in both cases, both of these tendinopathies, meaning pathologies of tendons, are going to put the tendon at further risk of injury. So in either case, the person is going to be more prone or more vulnerable to actually rupturing that tendon and causing much worse damage. Um, the treatment for the two is pretty similar, but there are a couple little differences. Um, for both, it's critical that you reduce or completely stop the offending activity. So that means whatever it is that caused it in the first place. So if it was tennis, or tennis, I almost said tennis. <laughs> if it was tennis or golf or whatever, you know, typing or whatever the, the thing is that you were doing that led to this problem in the first place, you got to cut it out. You need to stop or at least significantly reduce it and allow the tendon to recover. As long as you keep doing this activity and too much of it, 
the inflammation or the degeneration, those processes are just going to continue down that same road. Um, then for tendonitis, the standard rice, rest, ice, compression, elevation can be helpful because it'll help bring down the inflammation. Um, but that's not going to be as effective for tendinosis because the problem there is not inflammation. Um, in both cases, physical therapy is usually helpful and they might also offer you cortisone injections. Um, and then in both cases, stretching and strengthening are usually going to be helpful. Um, so there's a little bit of difference and tendonitis taking NSAID. So non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs could be helpful, uh, because again, the goal is to bring down the inflammation, but that's not going to be very effective in helping tendinosis because again, the problem isn't inflammation. If the problem isn't inflammation, then doing therapies to address the inflammation are not going to be as effective. Um, so regardless of which one it is, if you reduce whatever the activity was that caused it in the first place, and then work on stretching, strengthening, um, and things that are going to help with mobility and restoring the normal function, then that's going to be very effective. If it is truly tendonitis, then things to reduce inflammation are going to help. Uh, but if it's tendinosis, it's not going to be very effective. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.